Hi, my name is Jacob Borg. And I'm James Hernandez, and we're going to give you a brief introduction to Vexel lasers. So, what is a Vexel? Vexel is a semiconductor laser. A Vexel has three main components, a gain medium, pump source, and resonator. The gain medium in a Vexel is a semiconductor chip composed of a distributed Bragg reflector and multiple quantum wells. The DBR is a reflector composed of multiple layers of semiconductor materials with varying refractive index. When a light wave is incident upon the DBR, there is partial reflections at each layer boundary, which constructively interfere. The active region is composed of multiple quantum wells separated by barriers. The potential wells contain discrete energy states formed when semiconductor materials are layered to form the Vexel. In the case of an optical upon Vexel, light that is incident onto the chip will be absorbed and electron hole pairs are subsequently generated within the chip. These carriers will diffuse into the potential well, falling down to the energy state that is most likely to be filled. A transition will occur from the conduction band to the valence band, resulting in the emission of a photon, and in conjunction with the resonator, gain and lasing proceeds. In a vesicle, the majority of the cavity is external to the chip. In a basic linear cavity vexel, the cavity consists of a DBR and a external mirror. The location of the external mirror is dependent upon the stability of the cavity and the beam profile size. The cavity length must be an integer number of the lasing wavelength. The location of the external mirror should also make the beam profile at the chip smaller than the pump spot size. Its surface emitting design allows the vexel to produce high output power while not compromising beam quality, which is excellent, near diffraction limited at TEM00. Devices have been designed using current power scaling techniques which include manipulating the pump spot size on the chip and using more efficient thermal management with the chip to produce output powers of 10 milliwatts to 60 watts. The Vexel's external cavity also provides it with a lot of extra wavelength versatility. Vexels, including tunable Vexels designed with tunable filters inside the cavity, have been designed that produce wavelengths ranging from the ultraviolet, near-infrared, and mid-infrared. The difference between the Vexel and the Viscal in a Vixel, the external mirror output coupler of a Vexel is replaced with an additional DBR that is also located on the chip, which is what makes the cavity internal. The benefits of the external cavity include the ability to add multiple nonlinear and linear optical tools into the cavity of your laser. It should also be noted that the Vixel uses a similar quantum well structure as the Vexel uses at the basis of its operation. Optical characteristics of the Vixel prohibit it from getting good beam quality at high output power, but due to its electro pumping, it is more mobile. To see a Vexel in action, we're going to make one laser and plot its PI curve. All right, let's go to the lab. To set up the cavity, a Heaney laser was reflected back on itself off the chip to achieve the perpendicularity with the chip, at which point the mirror was inserted at a distance dictated by the stability condition. A Vexel chip designed to laser at 940 nanometers was used. Here is our pump source, which is going at 808. Here's our chip, which is uh, supposed to laser with an 808 pump source. And as you look up here, you can see that it actually is lasing at 933.99, which is because of the uh, redshift when it heats up to higher powers. Here's our external mirror, which has a 97% reflectivity. And as you can see, it is lasing currently by the burning. Inserting a thermal detector which is going to give us our output power as I change drag current. This table shows our collected data. The PI curve of the Vexel starts at zero until it hits threshold where it begins lasing and there is a linear relationship between P and I. If we had a thermal detector that could detect above 3 watts accurately, we'd be able to see the graph taper down as we continued in the x direction 